This video talks about enzyme kinetics. Uh, this is from page 258, first day 2012. So if you want to follow along with me, please feel free to do so. So let's talk about the axis first. On the y-axis, we have 1 by substrate, and on the x-axis, we have 1 by v. Okay? Um, v is going to be really the velocity of the enzyme reaction. Okay, so what about the points where they meet? So the points where the line meets the x-axis, this is called the x-intercept, obviously, and the point where the y-axis meets, uh, the line where it meets the y-axis, that's called the y-intercept. Now, these have special significance because the y-intercept is actually 1 by v max, okay? And the x-intercept, it's going to be 1 by negative 1 by km. Okay? And this line represent km by v max. So slope is going to be km by v max. This is memory, just memorize it. No magic, just memorize. Okay, now let's talk about what really km represent. Km represents affinity, okay? This is for affinity. And Vmax represents substrate. But there is more to that. Substrate, okay? So the lower the km, the higher the affinity. So the lower as in the smaller the came. So let's say the line hits here. So this has, th let's say this is drug A and this is drug B. Drug A would have a higher affinity because the KM is so much smaller because it's a negative value, right? So the lower the KM, the higher, sorry, I'm, the lower the KM, the higher the affinity, okay? The lower the KM, the higher the affinity. And the higher the y-intercept, the higher the y-intercept, the lower the Vmax. Okay? So if the y-intercept was here, let's say this was drug C and drug D, drug C is going to have lower Vmax than drug D. So I don't know what much else to say about this particular point. Uh, other than memory, is that the lower the cam, the higher the affinity, the higher the y-intercept, the lower the Vmax. Okay, and Vmax is a representation of the amount of substrate. Now let's talk about inhibition, competitive and non-competitive inhibition. So again, we have the same graph on the uh, x-axis, we have one by substrate, and on the y-axis, we have one by V. And imagine that this is our uninhibited line, okay? Whenever we're talking about competitive inhibition, you know what that means? It means that they fight for the same binding site. So imagine that this is, uh, imagine that this is, uh, you know, an enzyme, and this little pocket is where uh, the substrate is going to come and bind, okay? So let's say this is substrate A and this is substrate B, or let's say, let's say this is drug A or this is drug B. If they both want to go to the same binding site, then they are in competitive inhibition. And how can you, whenever there is a competitive inhibition, how can you make the situation better? So let's say you want more of the drug A to bind than B. Well, increasing more of these people, okay? So increase, if you increase more of these people, there's more chances of, you know, bouncing, bouncing, and meeting this binding site rather than this one single one floating around here, right? So that's why in competitive inhibition, increasing the substrate increases your chance of binding, right? So that's competitive inhibition. Now let's say you have another drug, which is C, okay? But this binds to a different binding site, okay? Now this C, what it does, it comes and binds here, 
and it changes the shape of the enzyme okay when it changes the shape of the enzyme this binding site disappears so a and b cannot bind so c is kind of smarter in that way it's not even going for the same site but it's changing the bind the the conformation of the entire enzyme so this would be this is still inhibition because it's reducing those binding sites but this is non-competitive inhibition now how does competitive and non-competitive inhibition look on the graph if this is our uninhibited one our competitive one is going to re is going to have it's going to touch our y intercept okay so imagine this is our com competitor and they are going to intercept right here okay so this kind of inhibition is going to be competitive inhibition so when we're talking about uh, non-competitive inhibition the non-competitive inhib inhibitor it's going to touch our x-intercept but it's not going to touch the y-intercept it's going to have a very different uh, y-intercept than the uninhibited one so this would be our non-competitive and this would be our competitive okay so does a competitive inhibitor resemble substrate yes it does yes because they have to bind to the same binding site right it's going to resemble substrate but does a non-competitive inhibitor resemble substrate no it does not it doesn't have to be because it's by binding to a different binding site and it that binding site could look differently than the uh, binding site of the substrate. Another question I want to pose here is that competitive inhibitor, does it binds to the active binding site? Yes, it does. What about non-competitive inhibitor? No, it does not. It does not bind to the active binding site. So imagine that this is the active binding site. So the competitive inhibitor has what effect on Vmax? The competitive inhibitor has no effect on Vmax, but the Vmax is increased with the non-competitive. So Vmax is increased, that means Y-intercept is increased. And when the Y-intercept is increased, the value of Vmax actually drops. So from here to here is decrease in Vmax. Okay, that's because the Y-intercept is increased. Vmax is going to decrease. You do have to keep in mind that this is a one by V value, right? So increasing the Y-intercept is going to decrease the Vmax. Okay, so the next question is, what effect does competitive inhibitor has on the X, uh, on the KM value? So the competitive inhibitor, which is the competitive inhibitor now? You know, the blue line is the competitive inhibitor, and see that this has dragged this graph in this direction. So competitive inhibitor is actually increasing our KM value, but... What about non-competitive inhibitor? Non-competitive inhibitor has no effect on the KM value, but competitive inhibitor has is having a positive effect. It's it's increasing the KM value. And what happens when KM increases? When KM increases, the affinity decreases. Okay, we talked about that earlier. When KM increases, affinity decreases. Okay, so what about potency? What effect does a competitive inhibitor has on potency? Really, you would need more. Uh, more of the substrate so potency is decreased in both competitive and non-competitive efficacy is decreased in both competitive and non-competitive how would you define potency potency is the amount of drug given uh, for a, a desired effect okay so when you have inhibitors when you have antagonists it's going to decrease the potency whether it's competitive or non-competitive and how would you define efficacy Efficacy is the maximal effect a drug is going to have. So despite whether it's uh, competitive or non-competitive, it is going to have an effect on um, both of them. So both potency and efficacy is going to be decreased.